Hi everyone, it's Esther, Dr. Esther here. I'll be giving a series of short videos where I will highlight underrepresented people in STEM. And STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. I am a scientist working in the pharmaceutical industry and prior to that I did a PhD in Neurobiology. Growing up it was really hard for me to find people in STEM who didn't fit the standard stereotype of what people in STEM should be. And so I'm using my platform as a way to highlight underrepresented people in STEM, talk about their background, the work that they did and how it's contributed to our knowledge and the world we live in today. Now, and in terms of the people that I will focus on, these will be people from different countries, of different genders, um, people with different, dis with different types of disabilities. Um, I will try to be as diverse as I can be in who I highlight and I really hope that you enjoy these videos. So the first person I'm going to highlight, I may be slightly biased by the choice that I've made. Um, I was born in the UK, however my origin is um, Nigeria in Africa and so I've decided that the first person I'll highlight will be um, a person in STEM from Africa. And so I present to you Professor Jean-Jacques Muyembe Tamfum, or as he might be more commonly known, Professor Muyembe. Professor Muyembe was born and grew up in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, although his parents were farmers, he decided that he wanted to have a different um, type of life. And so he went off to study medicine. During his studies, he became really, really interested in the field of microbiology. And this is the study of living things that we can't see through our naked eyes. So this includes bacteria, viruses and fungi. After he did his medical degree, he, you'd think that, you know, having one doctorate degree would be enough. You'd think so. Um, no, apparently not. <laughs> he actually went on to then do a PhD after that in the field of virology and this is the study of viruses. After his PhD he went back to Congo and worked on outbreak control and um, he worked specifically on the cholera outbreak and the bacterial meningitis outbreak as well. Now before I discuss Professor Muyembe's involvement in the discovery and treatment of Ebola I thought I'd give a brief overview of what Ebola is. Ebola is a deadly virus that can be transmitted through direct contact so through broken skin, through bodily fluids and also through mucous membranes for example the eyes, the ears and the mouth. Once Ebola enters into a human's body it can infect cells and what I mean by infect cells is that it can enter into human cells. It can then replicate inside the human cell and then once it's finished replicating it can then be released from the cells and it can be released by either breaking apart the cell and exiting or it can um, basically bud off um, the cell that it's infected and so it can basically continue to do this and continue to do this and spread throughout the body and by spreading throughout the body Ebola virus can damage organs, it can damage the immune system and it can also lower the level of blood clotting cells that are in the body and so this can lead to uncontrollable bleeding. It's not a very pleasant virus to be infected by, I think we can all agree on that. So once Professor Miyembe had had his experiences working on outbreak control, he then at this point he realised that he couldn't just work on viruses and different microorganisms in the lab, he needed to be out in the field and so this leads to the discovery of the Ebola virus. Now the first known Ebola outbreak occurred in 1976 and this was in a Christian mission that was run by Belgian nuns in a certain part of Congo and so the health minister at the time asked Professor Miyembe and another scientist to go to this place and investigate what had happened and so they went. Back then they didn't have the protective clothing that we would use these days when entering into a contaminated area. So Professor Miyembe was one of the first scientists or one of the first people to come into contact with Ebola virus and survive. He actually took um, tissue samples from um, three nuns who had died there um, by being in contact with the virus and then he also took blood from a nurse um, that had been sick with the virus. And so from this Professor Miyembe has been described as one of the first people to discover Ebola virus. And from that he has actually worked to fight nine outbreaks 
of Ebola virus in Congo since then. That's amazing. Since then, Professor Miembe has taken up a number of different roles. He was appointed the Dean of a university. He was made the director of the Republic of Congo National Institute for Biomedical Research. He has also worked as an advisor for the World Health Organization. And finally, he has led a number of researchers in their studies of different viruses. Now, Professor Miembe didn't stop there. For him, it was not just important to give strategies for how to control Ebola virus or how to prevent future outbreaks. For him, it was really important to try to develop treatments as well. So working with other researchers, Professor Miembe led the discovery of Ebola treatment. This treatment is what we call an antibody. This antibody was actually isolated from a survivor of Ebola virus and it works by binding onto a protein of the Ebola virus that is needed for the virus to enter into human cells. Because this antibody is binding to that particular protein, it means that the Ebola virus cannot attach itself to the cell and therefore enter into human cells and, inf and, cause, and cause the infection that we see. So I think from this video, we can definitely see that Professor Muyembe is an outstanding scientist. We've heard a lot about Ebola and its outbreak through the news. However, I feel like Professor Muyembe and his work hasn't been as highlighted as it should be and as it deserves to be. He has been working to try to understand this virus for over 40 years. He has worked to train the next generation of microbiologists and doctors. He actively engages with his community and he's been working really hard to try to find effective treatments for this virus. And so I'm using this opportunity to highlight his work, highlight his contributions to the world that we live in today and just make him more visible. With that, I hope that you've enjoyed this first video. If you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask them and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.